So you've just finished your Ruby on Rails app and now you're ready to deploy it. You could deploy with Heroku, which is uh, really easy to do, and their uh, free plan is uh, pretty good for a small Ruby on Rails app. However, once your app starts to grow bigger and you start need to, needing extras, the price goes up quite a bit. So a cheaper way to deploy could be deploying to a virtual private server. You could get a virtual private server on the web Linode and DigitalOcean are just two providers of many um, to, to give you a virtual private server that you could deploy to. But once you start deploying to a virtual private server, you can have to install the software and uh, configure it yourself. And that's where Capistrano comes in. Capistrano is really good to uh, deploy your Ruby on Rails app onto a server. Um, however, it doesn't provision the server out of the box. So provisioning the server means installing the software that you need, like Ruby itself, and then your web server, Nginx or Apache, your database server, and so on. So you could uh, try to provision your server with Capistrano. Um, however, with Capistrano 3.0, they don't recommend that you uh, do sudo commands very often. And if you do sudo commands, they recommend a passwordless sudo. So as of Capistrano version 3.0, you probably want to find another solution besides Capistrano to provision your server. And then once your server is provisioned, you can use Capistrano to deploy. Now one solution to provision your server automatically is Chef. Chef has a lot of different cookbooks that are open source. And so that you can get a Nginx cookbook and it will install Nginx. You can get one for Ruby and a lot of other uh, cookbooks as well. Uh, it could be a very good solution for you, so you should check it out. However, uh, Chef is quite complex, and you're also at the mercy of the cookbooks that you use, and documentation and reading those cookbooks could be a little hard to understand. So there is a, so a simpler solution to provision your server, and that's Sunzi. Um, Sunzi is a uh, just is a uh, bash shell scripts that you can write, and if you see some uh, scripts or commands to type in, you just copy and paste those commands into Sunzi, and that will automate your provisioning process. So in this episode, we'll provision a server with Sunzi, and then we'll deploy our Rails app with Capistrano. So we'll create a new Rails app called Todo to keep track of uh, to-do tasks. And then we'll change into the uh, to-do directory and open up our code in a text editor. So we'll also start our Rails server. And as of Rails 4.0, you have Spring. So you type bin Rails s to start the server. Go to localhost 3000 and make sure your app is up. Now we can run bin rake db create to create our Postgres database, which we're using. And I'm going to use the scaffolding to create a task model that has a name, a due date, and a priority. And then we'll migrate the database. And we'll edit the routes file. And we have the resources task in the generator, and we'll just uh, add a root to go to the task index action. And we'll re reload our web page. And now we can create a task, give it a due date and a priority, and now our application is working. And this is what we want to deploy. First step in deploying is to get our application in a code repository. So I'm going to put it in a git repository. And then I'm going to edit my git ignore file so that I can ignore the database file and the secrets file in our config directory. Um, you probably don't want to check these into, your, uh, and into a git repository that's open for everybody to see. So we'll just make sure that we ignore them. And then I'm uploading this repository to GitHub. So I've created a repository on GitHub. And now I'm adding my remote. And then I am going to add all the files. And we can check the status with git, git status. And then we can uh, git commit 
first message, first commit. And then push that up to the origin. And now our uh, application is under a code repository. So next we're ready to provision our server. And to do that, we'll need the Sunji gem. And we'll just install this with the gem install command because it doesn't need to be in our bundle. Once we have the gem installed, we can change directories to our config directory. And we'll run the sunzi create command. And that'll create us a folder inside of our uh, config directory with all of our sunzi files. So the two most important files inside of the sunzi directory is the install.sh. This is your main install script. As you can tell, it's a bash script. Um, the only difference is, is it has some ERB inside of it. Um, the next important file is a sunzi.yaml file. And as you can tell, we've uh, turned on eval erb true by default. And what that allows us to do is all of our uh, install scripts will be run through an erb, um, run through erb so that we can uh, add variables however we want. So you notice here we're setting the environment right here to the attributes.environment. So where does this variable come from? Well, it's just in this uh, hash up here in our YAML file. So we can uh, write our own install scripts and uh, we can put any variables we want into the attributes. And um, we normally put our own install scripts in this uh, directory right here, the recipes directory. And as soon as you has one automatically that just defines some functions that you can use. And so that's uh, the sunzi.mute uh, function right here. So uh, we can write our own recipes in here. And if we want to include them, we just do the source recipes in the name of it. Now this files directory, we, if we want to uh, have any files that we want to copy over to our server, we can put them in this files directory. And then our uh, recipe can copy that file to the right place. So I've created some recipes and uploaded them to GitHub. I'll include a link to this in the notes below. And you can uh, copy the URL from it here. And then you can clone this in a directory outside of your project. So just paste that URL. And I'm going to call the directory I clone it into Sunz template. So now back in our uh, project directory, we can go into the config Sunz directory that we've already created. And from there, we can copy the files from our template that we just um, downloaded into our directory. So first I'll copy all the files into the files directory and all the recipes into the recipes directory. And then the other two files that we'll copy is the sunzi.yaml file to the base directory and then install.sh. And then once we've copied all of the files, we can view those in a text editor. So this is the main install scripts. The first thing we'll do is we'll update our system with all the system updates. We'll set the Rails environment and make sure that we don't download RI and RDoC files when we uh, download gems. And then we'll um, source in all of these recipes right here. So these will just run these recipes one at a time. And so we could go and look at those recipes. Um, we'll look at the build essential sh, and we'll just uh, use aptitude to see if it's already build essential is already installed. If it's not, um, then we'll install build essential and all the other uh, dependencies we need to build Ruby. And then we'll also install uh, Git, and um, we'll install rb env right here. And here's an install script right here. So if you notice, there's always an if statement right here to check to see if we've already done it. That's nice. If uh, one of our uh, scripts doesn't work completely, uh, it, it'll, we can uh, restart it and it will skip over the stuff that we've already done. Um, we also have um, uncom uncomplicated firewall, Node.js. If you notice, I'm installing um, these from the PPA libraries that are a little bit more up to date. The same with Nginx as well. And the most complex script is Postgres right here. Um, we install it from the PPA, but um, by default, Postgres is security. 
requires that you have a Linux user with the same name as your database user in order to log in. So um, I've created a configuration file for um, Postgres to allow users to log in using their password. So the rest of this uh, Postgres script right here uh, copies that configuration file to the right spot and restarts Postgres so it allows a password a login. And then I create a a user for the, my uh, application and a database as well. Now if you notice all of these files uh, install scripts can use uh, the ERB and the attributes hash that we set up in sunzi.sh and in fact you can even use those files in um, your all right, use ERB in your file so right here we're using ERB and this no password config is for uh, Capistrano. Capistrano does require that some commands run as the super user. So you need to be able to do a passwordless sudo. And so this uh, sets up passwordless sudo for your uh, deploy user. And your deploy user is uh, created with the add user.sh. Now this uh, environment set environment variables is a way that I thought that you could uh, set some environment variables in, on your uh, deploy users machine so that when you launch up Ruby you'll have environment variables set up but I haven't tested it so you might want to look at that some more. Another thing is if you don't want to run one of these uh, recipes you could just comment it out. You can also edit your recipes if one of them fails halfway through you can edit the, the recipe file itself so if the, the this part of Postgres worked but this part didn't you could comment out the if statement and then comment out the commands that worked and then try to start going from where you left off. Um, now the next thing we need to do is uh, you need to set up your uh, your information and your attributes right here. Make sure you get the right Ruby version, your environment. This is to be able to copy over the configuration file for Postgres. You want your user, your database user, as well as your deploy user and put all this information in here. Now if you notice you're putting a password right here um, and so whenever you're putting anything sensitive, you do not want to check that into your source code repository. And the other thing that you don't want to check in is your uh, deploy key. Although I don't think it will do any harm, you probably don't want to check in your own personal public deploy key into a repository where everybody can read it. So for the deploy key in the sunzi.yaml file, we'll make sure that we don't check those into the code repository by uh, adding that into git ignore. So we could just add those files into our git ignore file. And then what I like to do is create a sample file to let me know if I ever do this again. I have a sample file that I can uh, copy over to be the real file. So we'll just copy the sunzi.yaml file to be uh, sample.yaml file. And you want to copy it before you put the sensitive information in it. And we'll also copy the deploy key in our files directory to um, deploykey.sample. And now um, we can go ahead and edit our sunzi.yaml file and our deploy keys without worrying about them getting checked into the source code repository. To set up your deploy key, you just want this is so that your uh, deploy user can get logged in without a password. So we'll just copy our uh, public key into the deploy key. And now we can start setting up uh, these variables without worrying about them getting checked into our uh, into our source code repository. So it's right here. The deploy user will use deploy. The app name is to do, and of course you'd fill in your Postgres password as well. So now we need a VPS to be able to deploy a machine to. So I'm going to use DigitalOcean, but you can use any uh, VPS provider you want. You can uh, sign up or log in if you already have an account. And you can click on the Create button to create your, your droplet. I'm going to call this Sunzi Deploy. You want to, might want to name it after, after your app. Select the size. This uh, smallest size should work for us. I'm going to put it in San Francisco because that's the location closest to me. And I'm going to select Ubuntu 14.04. And I'm going to use, I've already added my SSH key in here, my public SSH key. So it's going to automatically add that to the root user so I can SSH in as the root user. And then I'll just create the droplet. 
Once you create the droplet, you should see that it will give you an, uh, a public IP address that you can use to SSH in. And you also might want to set up a DNS server and point that DNS to your uh, IP address so that you can SSH in that way. And you might want to test to make sure that you can SSH into your machine at its IP address using the root account. And it worked. Next, we can run the sunz compile command. And that will compile all of our files. If you notice, it created a compiled directory. And in that compiled directory, we can look and all of the ERB is gone and replaced with the right values. And what, uh, when we go to deploy, you don't have to run the compile directory because when you deploy, it will automatically compile. But what it's going to do is it's going to copy the compile directory over to your server and then run the install.sh script, which will run all of your recipes that you want to. So to deploy, you just type sunz deploy and then your IP address of your machine and it should go. And now this will take a while, and uh, when it goes to install Ruby, it might look like it's frozen. But if you look up at the top, up here in red, you'll see that Ruby is getting installed. So now you could go take a break because this will probably take a good 10 to 15 minutes. So the last script that ran on mine was the uncom uncomplicated firewall, and we could see that that ran OK. If there was any error, it would have quit before we, it ran the last roll. And then by pasting in our IP address in a web browser, we can see that Nginx got set up and is working. You might want to check other things to make sure they're working as well. Another thing you might want to check on to see if it's working is if you can SSH using your deploy user that was just created. And it works. Now we're ready to deploy using Capistrano. Ben Dixon has written up a great tutorial on how to do that, and I'll link to this in the notes below. He has also uh, created a uh, a library and some config files that we'll be using so you want a Capistrano template and you can do that by copying this to the clipboard by copying that URL and I'm gonna do this into cap template in the cap template directory. Next you want to include the unicorn gen and the Capistrano gem that he recommends so we'll go ahead and save that and run bundle to install them. So next we'll want to install uh, initialize Capistrano, so run bundle exec cap install. Now that command should have created a cap file in your directory and in that cap file we'll want to include the required things, so rb env bundler and if you want to um, compile the assets on your server you'll need this assets if you want to compile it on your local machine, you can uh, do it that way without including this. And it will also include the migrations. We also want to include uh, the um, tasks that he has created for us. So that's why we have to copy this line here. And then we want to change this rake to cap since his names are uh, named the .cap file. After we've done that, we can copy all the files from Ben's template over into our project. So we're cop copying the um, RB files in the lib capistano directory and the tasks in the ta into the task directory. I'm going to copy deploy.rb, which is the main deploy file for capistrano, and also the production file as well. I'm also going to copy over all the shared files into our project. Next, you want to edit your deploy.rb file with your information. So we have the to-do app right here. Um, this should be the deploy user that you set up with SunZ. You want to copy over your Git repository. And then make sure you have the right Ruby version right here. Another thing is, since we're going to use our secrets.yaml file, we need to uh, link over that. And um, you have your link directories, which should be fine. You have your config files. We'll want to add in uh, our um, secrets.sample.yaml file as well. Now, I'm not using Monit, but if you're using it, you might want to leave that in. So I'm taking that out. And then executable files is fine. And again, I'm not using Monit, so I'm going to take that out. And then down here, um, 
also not going to do any tests, but if you have tests, you might want to consider doing that. And we're not going to run our tests. And also, I'm not going to restart start Monit either. And one little gotcha, if you are following his tutorial online, make sure you copy the code out of his Git repository. He has changed some stuff that could cause, cause errors, for example, this line and this line. Now I've already edited the git ignore to ignore the database and secrets.yaml file right here. Um, but we do need uh, samples uh, here. In our samples, we're going to put them in the shared directory. And if you copied everything over, you already have a database sample file. So we'll just need to create a secret sample file too. So in the deploy shared directory, make sure you create a file called secrets.sample.yaml.erb. And then you can take your secrets file right here and copy and paste it into this secrets file and then you don't need the test or the development part. Now the last thing is there are some recipes in here that you might not be using so if you want you could go ahead and delete those files but it wouldn't hurt you to keep them in. Now you can leave this stage in here um, when you ran cap install it generated this file. If you plan on using a staging server or you can delete that one if you're not planning on using it. Now next you want to edit your production.rb and you want to put in your server name and for me it's just my IP address. But if you set up DNS and my domain name you'd want to put that here and you also want to put this here. And also if you're planning on using SSL then you probably want to set that to true to help configure your Nginx correctly. So we're now ready to set up our deployment. So now we can just type cap deploy or cap production deploy setup config. And now this might take a little bit of time, not too long, but it's going to copy over some of the configuration files and stuff to set it all up. So next we'll want to SSH over to our uh, server and once we're there we want to go into our apps directory this uh, Capistrano created and we should see our pr production app there and we'll go into the shared directory and the config directory from there and we should see our secrets.sample and our database.example file right here so we'll just copy the secrets.example to secrets.yaml file and since this is on our server and not checked into our code repository, we're okay putting secrets in here. And we'll also do the same for our database.example file. And then we'll just use our favorite editor to edit those. Fill in the host with localhost and fill in your password right there and edit your secrets.yaml file right here and you want to get a secret key base to put in here so one way to is uh, to generate one is if you go back to your app you can run rake secret and this will give you a secret key that you can copy and paste in here and then you can just exit out of your server and one last thing that I forgot to mention is if you want to compile assets on your development machine you can leave this line in you'll just have to make sure you set up a uh, configuration for your production database in order for that command to work instead in my cap file I've included the rels asset right here so it'll compile it on the server itself. Now next we can um, probably commit all of our changes to the um, to our uh, app to GitHub. So we'll git add all. And Make sure we push those up to GitHub. 
And now we can run cap production deploy. And after this command runs, we should be up and running. It will take a while because it will have to download all of, uh, it'll have to run bundler and download all of your gems. And you want to kind of look through here briefly to make sure there's no errors. And if there's an error, you'll need to figure out what it is and fix it. But if everything went well, then you can go back and visit your site and reload the page. And now your app should be up and running. Now, if you do see any errors or if for some reason this isn't working and uh, you look through um, all the output from the deployment, you can also look in the Nginx log file and you can also look in the Unicorn log file in your shared directory and also your uh, app log file to see if there's any error messages that can help uh, guide you on as to what went wrong.